Hey everyone and welcome back to another Niagara tutorial where today we'll be recreating this ribbon trail effect in the background. This can be added to things like projectiles or moving vehicles as a kind of neon sort of light trail effect. For this particular effect you won't need any assets or specific setup to follow along. As always if you wanted to get access to all of these complete projects that I've been releasing alongside with the tutorial content you can get access to those over on the patreon page and i just wanted to say a big thank you to all of the patreon supporters already supporting the channel allowing me to make some of these additional weekly videos at the moment and of course if you enjoy the videos find this useful or want to see more content like this do be sure to leave a like and subscribe so jumping straight in we can see what we're aiming for we'll be using a simple ribbon effect as always, we're going to start with a Niagara emitter. If you're not sure why, take a look at some of the other videos in this playlist, as I go into a lot more detail about the basics in earlier videos. But quite simply, we'll right click in here, we'll go to Effects, and from the drop down, we're going to select our Niagara emitter. For the template, we'll select New. We're going to go to the Dynamic Beam, as we also have a static beam down here, but the Dynamic one is the one which will be set up as close as we can get this by default. This will have our ribbon trail, and I'm just going to rename this one to NE underscore trail. Inside of the effect, we can see a few things here. So we already have a trail which is spawning in on a kind of loop and fading out. So we're going to change some of these effects as we go through. As always, we'll take a top to bottom approach. We'll go through kind of in order to see what things we need to update to get that final result that we're looking for. And just to mention that we can leave a few things. So if we jump straight to the bottom to get this one out of the way, first of all, and then we can take our top to bottom approach. So on the ribbon renderer, we just want to make sure that we already have the ribbon renderer selected and that we'll be using the default ribbon material. So as long as that is the default options in your current build of the Unreal Engine, just, just in case anything changes between the different versions, these are the default settings that I'm using to get this visualized. Then back over on our particle node, a lot of this is going to be done in the emitter update. We actually don't need to affect the settings or the spawn details. Now the first two things which are causing the issue where this isn't a continuous beam and this isn't going to allow us to get that kind of nice a smooth kind of curve to this is that we're spawning this as a burst instantaneous so we can get rid of this to begin with and we also don't want this to be a beam so we can go ahead and get rid of the em emitter beam setup as well instead what we want here is we're going to add a new module just here we're going to look for the spawn rate and i'll just set this to a default of 100 for the rate in which we are going to be spawning our particles and if we just make sure as well that on the emitter state we have this set to the life cycle mode of self so relevant only to the emitter not the potentially controlling uh, niagara system that we'll be creating a little bit later we want this to loop infinitely so we don't want this to keep spawning just once and then needing to reset and the loop duration at a default of four will be perfectly fine now this has given us some error messages below we now have conflicting setups because we've removed some of the things from the emitter update so what we want to do is we're going to come down and we can actually remove the spawn beam and the beam width as we'll be updating these in the particle update a little bit later and instead we're going to replace this with an initialize ribbon module so the ribbon is the effect that we want compared to the beam, which is going to give us that nice kind of smooth curling that we can add to this. And a few details we can update here. Just for the visuals, really, I'm going to give this a lifetime of 0.5 for now. We can leave the mass as it is, and I'll set the color to be blue. For the ribbon width, I'll leave this at 5 for now, and again, we'll be updating this a little bit later. Now we're just going to jump ahead very quickly just because we have one more error to get rid of and then we can start actually viewing our progress. Because we're still working with a ribbon and we still have some of that leftover data from the beam, we're just going to get rid of the update beam module just here. And then you may be familiar with these. We won't really see anything happening with our ribbon particle unless it's in movement. So just to kind of demonstrate what the changes we're making now are going to be looking like as we go through, I'm going to go back to the particle spawn and add in a torus location module. You can see what this does. We can now get at least some kind of visual representation of the particle effect. So we can see at least this is being drawn somewhat as we would expect. A few things we'll want to change here. So we're gonna change the torus mode to ring so that we get a more kind of circular update here. Then we'll change the torus distribution from random to direct so that we don't have those squiggly lines. That will make things disappear because we now don't have the uh, U position being updated. So we're just going to make the U position using this drop down 
based on the emitter age. If you just type age, you'll be able to find this. And we can see now this is now looking much more like we wanted the kind of final result. So you could now kind of place this on the end of a moving projectile or something, and you'd have this kind of update. Of course, when you come to using this, you want to make sure that we untick the torus location. Because we now have this torus movement going on, that would conflict with the final results. But this will make it a lot easier for us to test and work out how things are looking. So we don't need to go from the emitter to testing things in the world to making our tweaks back here. So this is really just a kind of demo kind of module for us to work with in the editor right now. So the final changes, uh, we can leave pretty much everything in the update as it is. We won't need the color unless you wanted to update the color over time. Uh, remember, we have our initialized ribbon, which is already controlling this. So we don't need to do this twice. You can see that when I remove that, we're not going to get any changes because that is being updated here. And that is really uh, how I've got mine working in the final results. Now, the only other thing you might notice is that this is a kind of uniform width. So the one other thing I added to my system is a scale ribbon width over the update duration. With the new module, I'm just going to go to the drop down and change this from a set variable to a float from curve. I'm going to add a new point in the curve by shift and left clicking. For the first point, I'm going to set this at 0 0.5 so it starts a little bit smaller than the final width or the middle width. I'm then going to make the middle node that I've just created much, much higher. So almost around about two, I think I end up with here. And then, of course, the final one is going to be left at zero at the end of the normalized time range of one and remember i tend to like to add a little bit of lerping in here so i'm going to select all of the nodes drag select all of the nodes right click on one of them and provide the auto for the easing and this just makes things look a little bit smoother and that is really the end of the result so we can now come in if we wanted and now that we can see things a little bit easier we can come and test different variables that are kind of just preset beforehand so the things that will really make a difference for example would be uh, the initialized ribbon details we could set the ribbon width here to be much higher so if we make this 10 then of course we're going to get a thicker kind of uh, ribbon as we go through and the other thing which can make a big difference is the lifetimes so if we increase this to something quite high then we're going to get a ribbon which doesn't quite disappear before the end of it so we can get an almost sort of continuous loop here or somewhere in between and it looks as though it's catching up a lot more so Play around with these values, get the ribbon looking as you want. And remember the final thing we're going to need to do, now that we have the ribbon looking somewhat as we would want it to look like in the level, remember we want to always untick the torus location. We don't want this saved as the final result. Uh, before going ahead and doing that though, store this as a thumbnail so we know kind of what this is going to look like. That means when I'm done with the torus location so we can untick this. And then back in the editor, I'm just going to right click on the emitter. We're going to turn this into a system. And I'll rename this one to ns underscore trail. So inside of here, this is going to look exactly as we had it previously. We can come in if we wanted. We can re-enable the torus location again so that we can test things inside of our Niagara system. As I've mentioned, this will normally be attached to another actor, a blueprint of some sort, for example. And the movement will be getting driven from that blueprint rather than inside of the emitter. And so that we don't have the kind of clashing in which type of velocity should be taken into account, again, I'm just going to untick the torus location, compile this, and this is now ready to use in a blueprint. I will just come back in quickly, though, and give this a thumbnail as well. Again, it's just always easier to see uh, what the emitter or the particle is if it has a thumbnail ready to go. Now, the final thing for the blueprint, I'm just going to be using this as a demonstration to show you how the final result could look made a very very simple blueprint i'll go through the details in case you are interested so we have a rotating movement component i've set this to rotate at 360 on the z i have the event tick driving just constant forward movement based on a movement speed that i've made public multiplied by delta seconds for frame rate independence and we've set this to be moving on the forward vector of the actor so we're adding an actor world offset in the forward direction of course that's being changed by the rotating movement and then on begin play i have a timer which is calling this rotation switch every second looping and that is just taking the current rotation so this 360 and multiplying it by minus one so we're going to keep flipping the direction in which is rotating and then quite simply visually this is an empty actor this is just a default scene route it has the niagara effect ready to go and i'm just going to fill the system here with the ns underscore trail that I've just made, hit compile and save. And then we can drag this into the world and simulate play.
And that's how I got the final result for the demonstration, just showing how we can set this to be on a moving blueprint. As I said, we don't want the torus location to be working. If we did, you can see that kind of goes against it. It's trying to rotate around the torus and also follow the actor's rotating movement as well. And then some other things you could play with is adding things like the uh, the timeline or the uh, yeah the lifetime sorry so you could see what this would look like if we increase the lifetime or the ribbon width so all of this can be done kind of live if you weren't aware from the Niagara editor here uh, and you can play around with different effects to see how this will look in the world now so like I said if you wanted just very quick kind of immediate feedback in the preview panel over here then the torus location is really useful when you have things kind of set up more as you know you want them to look then we can start playing around with things in the world outliner by updating the particle details just here so as always a big thank you to all of the names scrolling down the screen in the background here as mentioned your continued support of the channel over on patreon is greatly appreciated and allows me to keep making these weekly tutorials and of course, if you've enjoyed the video, found this useful, or wanted to see more like this, then do be sure to leave a like, drop a comment, and subscribe, so that I can gauge what people are finding useful, and of course, keep that YouTube algorithm happy to allow me to keep making more videos for longer. As ever though, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.